Coming up on Ag Week TV, farmers get a powerful new tool in the war on resistant weeds. I get up close and personal with Daisy, the pet bison. Definitely one of the coolest experiences I've ever had on our show. And we'll introduce you to a rancher who's been at it for 70 years and at the age of 92, he's still going strong. Welcome to Ag Week TV, I'm Shauna Olson. Farmers got some very good news this week. A new dicamba-resistant soybean was approved by the government last year, and now the EPA has approved the herbicide that goes with it, low-volatility dicamba. Now farmers can use both the seed and the herbicide. Mikkel Pates explains how this will help soybean growers in their battle against weed resistance. We have rampant weed resistance across the United States, including North Dakota. Sometimes we don't have the tools available to control those resistant weeds. NDSU Extension Weed Specialist Rich Zollinger says an important new tool to fight Roundup resistance is on the way. This is one of the newest technologies that we've seen in a long time and it's going to have a, a significant impact on U.S. agriculture. It will have glyphosate, and dicamba, it could have a glufosinate or Liberty resistance also. Those, if, if it isn't, they will probably come in the future. Depending on where you live, water hemp and palmer amaranth are two of the weeds that are getting harder to fight and spreading across the country. Although dicamba resistant seed was available last year, it was used more in the southern part of the country for soybeans and cotton. Well, this is really big news. Carl Peterson owns Peterson Farm Seeds of Prosper, North Dakota. At one time, Roundup Ready Seed was the solution to weed problems. We went back to that well again and again, and of course, Mother Nature does what Mother Nature does, and the resistant weeds become an issue. Peterson predicts Extend will gain a significant market share this year, but he warns against overusing this technology. If we move whole hog into the Extend platform using dicamba, we'll have dicamba glyphosate resistant weeds very quickly. But what this Extend does is gives us another tool to use to manage that. For Ag Week TV, this is Mikkel Pates. Even though it's approved by the EPA, it still needs to be approved for use in each state. And in some states, farmers must attend a training session before using it. American Crystal Sugar says beet payments are down this year. The first projected payment is $38 a ton for 2016 beets. Growers had been expecting $43 or $44 a ton. The final payment for 2015 was nearly $50 a ton. In a letter to shareholders, Crystal President Tom Astrup said the drop is mainly due to lower sugar content and sugar prices and higher operating costs per ton. Higher yields will make up for the lower price. The big variable for growers is the cost of production, but the average is about $1,000 an acre. While tons were good, sugar content was the lowest it's been in some time. Crystal board member and grower Bill Hale says the biggest wild card left now is the warm weather and its effect on beet spoilage. Everyone who's in the sugar beet business understands there's a lot of risk involved because sugar beets are still alive in that pile. And even once we get them frozen, if we have a warm spring, things could get difficult. Uh, but so far, we've, uh, knock on wood, been pretty good at uh, getting our beets processed. Mindac Farmers Co-op in Wapaton is not releasing payment projections for the 2016 crop. The Obama administration was pushing hard to get the Trans-Pacific Partnership done in the lame duck session of Congress. However, the outcome of the presidential election has slowed the 12-nation trade deal that includes the U.S. and other Pacific Rim countries. President-elect Trump has indicated he would like to renegotiate the agreement, but farm groups haven't given up and are still working with Congress to bring up the agreement for a vote as soon as possible. Ag Week's Michelle Rook has more. Farm groups are continuing to push for passage of the Trans-Pacific Partnership, despite headwinds in Congress and word the Obama administration is giving up on the deal. 
The ag community admits it's a long shot, but still wants Congress to approve the deal in the lame duck. Let's go ahead and let's push together what's a, what's a good trade deal for especially soybean farmers, corn, corn farmers. Our message has not changed from before the election until now. TPP is our number one priority. We need to get this done by the end of the year. Cattle industry leaders say while the clock ticks on TPP, U.S. cattle producers are losing money. We are losing $400,000 each and every day that we don't have that trade agreement. That is because Australia is taking away our market access into Japan because their tariff is lower than ours. However, economic analysis shows benefits for all of agriculture. The most conservative estimate is the one that's in the Farm Bureau analysis, and that indicates somewhere between 4 and $5 billion of additional trade and additional farm income on a yearly basis. Vilsack says if the U.S. blinks, the deal may still go forward. There's nothing that would prevent the countries that ultimately approve this from proceeding without the U.S. And so there may not be a chance for a redo, even if the new administration changed their tune about opposing the agreement. Some of the other signatures to that, that uh, agreement, other nations are saying, we're not going to renegotiate. We're done negotiating. That's why farm groups say it may be now or never for TPP. I'm Michelle Rook reporting for Ag Week. The other outcome, if the U.S. walks away from the trade deal, is other countries like China are waiting in the wings to enter the TPP. That would give them a leg up on the U.S. in those Pacific Rim countries. South Dakota Senator John Thune was the first Republican leader to call for Donald Trump to leave the race when a tape was released of Trump demeaning women. But Thune reversed himself a few days later and continued to support Trump. Thune is on the Ag and Commerce Committees and promised to work with the president, especially on ag policy. Hopefully he'll surround himself with people who will give him good sound advice. And I obviously will do everything I can to influence and shape uh, the decisions that he makes with respect to, um, you know, the ag economy. Up next on Ag Week TV, we'll meet a man who's been ranching longer than most of us have been alive and learn what keeps him going strong at 92. The American Farmer. You nurture the land, the livestock, and the future of agriculture. Nationwide and your local On Your Side Farm certified agent stand with you to help protect your farm and ranch operations we're in this together. I've been working with farmers and ranchers for over 30 years, and I understand the demands and risks they face. It's important for me to build a personal relationship with each and every customer. It's what I do. I'm Ray Trudeau, an elite farm certified agent, and I'm on your side. Make the ultimate upgrade this harvest with Goodyear LSW tires. LSW improves your footprint by up to 37% and gives you the ability to carry larger loads at lower inflation pressures, reducing soil compaction for a better yield next season. LSW tires are proven to reduce road load, making sure you can run at full speed from field to field, expediting your harvest. Visit your local Graham Tire to make the switch. When you reap the benefits of LSW tires, you'll know you're in Graham country. Upgrade your trailer to electric with the Rolltech electric system from AgriCover. Strong, flexible pivot arms and motor mount rotate and telescope, allowing the roll tube to rise and flex over heaped loads. The positive automatic lock is impossible to back off to control the flow of grain. This integrated system uses one wireless remote to operate up to 10 tarps and hoppers, keeping your driver out of the dust, rain, and harm's way. See the Rolltech system in action at an AgriCover dealer near you. Where do you go for the latest news in agriculture? AgWeek Magazine. Reaching over 30,000 farmers and ranchers in North Dakota, Minnesota, South Dakota, and Montana. AgWeek provides the most up-to-date information on the markets, the trends, and the people who make it all happen. We're your source for news, not fluff. Dependable. Trusted. AgWeek. Subscribe today by calling 1-800-811-2580. Redline, a starter fertilizer developed for corn and other crops. Applied in furrow, Redline offers a solid balance of N, P, and K plus micronutrients. Micronutrients remain soluble for uptake to the growing plant through bonding changes created by the same unique chelating agent found in soy green. Introducing Levisol. Levisol is mixed directly with liquid fertilizer for in furrow application to enhance and maximize nutrient efficiency. If you're looking for a little inspiration, you might want to listen up. 
Our Ag Week TV crew caught up with one of North Dakota's oldest active ranchers. His outlook on life and longevity are something many people can only dream of. Come on, come on, come on. Tucked away near the small town of Steele, North Dakota, is a cattle ranch owned by Paul and Betty Smokov, a ranch with longevity. I had cattle when I was 15 years old, but only a couple heifers, that's how I got started. Paul grew up on a cattle ranch and it stuck with him. To build a herd, it takes years, it takes years. And Paul knows. I'm partial to Hereford cows. Hereford's built this country. Because every day for the past 70 years, he's been here on his ranch. Come on, that's a nice girl. Feeding, checking, and caring for his animals. We have very few health problems here on our place. And at the age of 92, his herd is top notch. The genetics on these cows or some, they come from some of the best sires in the nation. His herd, now 120 cows. Did you calve, uh, calve them out this spring? Yes, we did, Betty and I did. At its peak, almost double that. Do you know of other people your age that are still doing what you do? I don't know of anybody. I've been looking. <laughs> <laughs> As Smokov will tell you, ranching and the cattle are in his blood. My dad always said, you take care of the cattle, they'll take care of you. And that's very true. Found that true. Neglect them, you're gonna pay for it. Over the decades, he's seen it all, including the drought and the depression in the 30s. Steel, North Dakota, in 1934, I think it was, it got to 121 degrees sometime in early July. And then 1936, got 59 below. Some, sometime in February, I think. Cold is on, on record. What's the lowest price you ever sold a calf for? Oh, in the 30s. They uh, sold calves, little calves, smaller knees, $3 a piece, a cow, eight, nine dollars. And now Smokov says, after all these glorious years raising his quality herd, it's time to be done. Will it be hard? Will it be hard when they finally all go? Will that be hard yeah, on you? Yeah, it'll be hard. It'll be, it'll be really... Well, when you live, them, live with them that long, you, you're kind of next to them. Yeah. They're your friends. What's making you decide to retire? What? Old, old age. <laughs> Can't do it anymore. <laughs> you know, you, you, you don't want to kid yourself. You can come to a point where you just can't do it right. Smokov planned to sell out this fall, but cattle prices are at a six-year low. Kind of depressing. And Smokov says, not yet. And so he waits with positivity. See, last year we sold steer calves in December, and they brought us right close to $1,100. Well, this year they're only bringing seven. So the industry can only stand it so long. It, it's got to do something. In the meantime, Smokov will hold tight and just keep ranching. A lot of farmers retire at mid-70s, but I felt good enough, and I just like to do it. Yeah. it, it is, to me, it's a challenge. I can do it. I get up in the morning, I make up my mind, I'm going to do it, and I do it. Smokov credits a lot of his success to his wife, Betty. She helps him on the ranch. Smokov has been honored by the North Dakota Stockmen's Association. He received the Rancher of the Year in 2013, among many other awards. Is our long fall finally coming to an end? Your agri-weather forecast is next. And later, we'll meet a very unusual pet, making her home where the buffalo roam. It's time to demand more. With microessentials, you get more from every acre. Through our fusion technology, only microessentials combines four vital nutrients into one powerful granule, ensuring uniform nutrient distribution and increased nutrient uptake. 
the innovation behind our fusion technology means you'll grow stronger, healthier plants. Micro Essentials. Get more from every acre. Commitment. You need it to succeed on the farm. It's total dedication to the land, family, and community. It's more than a way to make a living. It's a way of life. You've had it since the first time you ran your hands through the soil, held bale hay, or rode along in the combine. Your commitment. It's as strong as your family's trust. As honest as each long day you put in, and as pure as the opportunity that comes with every tomorrow. It's how we build our bins. With proven design, superior structural integrity, a lifetime warranty, and a promise to stand with you. No matter what storms come your way, the harvest will always be protected so you can sell when it's right for you, your family, and your farm. Commitment. It's why we can say, there's nothing standard about Superior. Where do you go for the latest news in agriculture? AgWeek Magazine. Reaching over 30,000 farmers and ranchers in North Dakota, Minnesota, South Dakota, and Montana. AgWeek provides the most up-to-date information on the markets, the trends, and the people who make it all happen. We're your source for news, not fluff. Dependable. Trusted. AgWeek. Subscribe today by calling 1-800-811-2580. Field Drainage Inc. has perfected the art of agricultural drainage by helping hundreds of farmers since 1978. We are a second generation family owned business for over 35 years. The Field Drainage Inc. team will work closely with you to conduct a thorough analysis of your needs and expectations. Provide an estimate that fits your budget, perform all work in a timely and professional manner, and provide continued service after installation. Field Drainage Inc., your trusted drain tile installation company for over 35 years. Weather part of Ag Week now, the first significant winter storm of the winter season has passed through parts of the northern plains and we'll see what effect it has. We are finally dealing with more average November temperatures and I see that for the foreseeable future. Nothing really earth shatteringly cold dropping into the northern plains upper Midwest anytime soon, but it's definitely turned cooler. First big snowstorm, of course, uh, that has passed through the area this weekend, actually late last week and probably the first of many in uh, very, very various parts of the area. The point is winter's beginning has finally begun to take some seeds. Now here's what's going on. The jet stream is actually kind of recovered a little bit this weekend after this deep low pressure trough moved through and brought uh, the snowstorm to parts of the region uh, late last week. Uh, it's actually turned relatively mild. Of course, the areas that have snow on the ground now are a bit colder than those that don't, but it's not really that cool across the area. However, the really warm air has gone in retreat down down south. You'll notice the rainy weather will persist along the west coast. Most of the pattern this week is not going to be especially rainy. As we get into Tuesday, I see another little weather system forming may actually produce some rain thunderstorms down in parts of Arizona, but that will likely move up into the some part of the lower or central Midwest around midweek. We'll still have cool weather mostly in the north. The warm weather will remain in the south. Mild enough that by the middle of the week toward Thanksgiving, there'll be a lot of snow melting going on across the northern plains and upper Midwest. But I don't think we're finished with the snow and the cold weather. But as far as this week goes, things will actually get a little warmer. Toward the weekend, I think the cold weather will begin to drop southward again, or at least the cool weather. Nothing terribly cold in this, but I think we'll see a lot of near freezing, slightly above freezing, and below freezing weather, while the warm air will stay down south, and most of the really wet weather this week will likely remain along the west coast. In the second week of the pattern, with all this cool weather locked around, I do see one weather system probably kicking up through some part of the Middle West around middle week, probably close to the jet stream. The weather will likely remain predominantly cool as we head into the first week of December. By that, it means probably a little below freezing, but not crazy cold. So December temperatures, we're going to start out the month with a little bit of cool weather. Things will relax a little bit, but there are definite signs as we get toward later in the month of some pretty cold weather taking root in this region across the northern plains and the Great Lakes area. As far as any serious weather goes, I see the month of December 
gradually getting colder, especially toward the end of the month. With the jet stream coming out of the southwest, there will be opportunity for several snowstorms through the region, so we may have more moisture coming in than we had last winter. Cool forecast short term, not that cold, turning colder in December and a snowy December pattern. Make the ultimate upgrade this harvest with Goodyear LSW tires. LSW improves your footprint by up to 37% and gives you the ability to carry larger loads at lower inflation pressures, reducing soil compaction for a better yield next season. LSW tires are proven to reduce road load, making sure you can run at full speed from field to field, expediting your harvest. Visit your local Graham Tire to make the switch. When you reap the benefits of LSW tires, you'll know you're in Graham country. The American Farmer. You nurture the land, the livestock, and the future of agriculture. Nationwide and your local On Your Side Farm Certified Agent stand with you to help protect your farm and ranch operations. We're in this together. I've been working with farmers and ranchers for over 30 years, and I understand the demands and risks they face. It's important for me to build a personal relationship with each and every customer. It's what I do. I'm Ray Trudeau, an elite farm certified agent, and I'm on your side. Pronovost snowblowers, just what you need. Lots of standard features and 33 models available and the colors you want. The high level of manufacturing and performance standards assures you of owning the superior, most advanced equipment. Snowway is the leader in designing snowplows with a big appetite for snow. Whether you're seeking a snowplow for your truck, skid steer, or UIV, Snowway has a highly engineered snowplow to fit your needs with a variety of options. For Pronovost snowblowers or Snowway snowplows, contact your nearest dealer or North Country Marketing. Where do you go for the latest news in agriculture? AgWeek Magazine. Reaching over 30,000 farmers and ranchers in North Dakota, Minnesota, South Dakota, and Montana. AgWeek provides the most up-to-date information on the markets, the trends, and the people who make it all happen. We're your source for news, not fluff. Dependable. Trusted. AgWeek. Subscribe today by calling 1-800-811-2580. You make me wear my bike helmet. You taught me never to run with scissors. And to follow the swimming rules. You tell me to stay away from drugs. To always buckle my seatbelt. So why do you keep a loaded gun in your drawer? How safe is that? You ask them to follow some safety rules, now they're asking you. In fact, they're counting on you. Never let your gun get into the wrong hands. Remember, always lock it up. Visit ncpc.org. It's not every day you get to pet a real live buffalo, but there's a rancher near New Rockford, North Dakota, that has a tame bison on his ranch. We paid it a visit, and I can tell you, it was a thrill. <laughs> Meet Daisy. She's usually not too shy. Oh, oh my Lanta, you made my week. <laughs> She's a seven-year-old pet bison. I like having her ears scratched. She lives on Ryan Hummelvig's Kenmar Bison Ranch near New Rockford, North Dakota. She wants her pellets. Hummelvig has been ranching for many years and says while it's a novelty to have a tame bison, he doesn't recommend it. He says this situation just happened. She was just an orphan and we were driving around. We saw it running around the pasture all by itself and we grabbed it or whatever and, and, and broke it and started bottle feeding it. And she's been the pet on the ranch ever since. There comes your buddy. Could this be any cooler? <laughs> she's making sure that one stays out of here. I mean, I think she's like seven years old now or whatever, so the males kind of get ornery or whatever, but I mean, she's been pretty gentle and stuff. She used to check all the pens with us in the morning and stuff and follow the four-wheeler around and stuff. Hi, Daisy. Look at these guys. <laughs> Hummelvig says Daisy is a huge help to him and his herd. The rest of them are all two-year-old, and we keep her around to tame the rest of them down and so that they're, they're used to people. And with Daisy's calm demeanor, wow, that's amazing. She has a home on this ranch for a very long time. Yeah, she'll die here someday, I and mean, she'll she'll always be a pet. It'd be way too hard to ever get rid of her. She's kind of become a pretty good pet. The average lifespan of a bison is 20 to 25 years, so at seven, Daisy could be around for many more years. 
Hummelvig says this warmer than average fall weather has been a nice benefit for his herd. It's not only easier to be out working in it, but also easier on the pocketbook. This has been the best fall I've had in a long time. I'm still grazing. I, I usually, I, the last few winters, I've been starting to feed in August, and it's the middle of November, and I'm still out grazing. I mean, so it's just a huge I mean, money savings when I can actually go and do that. So it's, it's just perfect. Stay tuned. More Ag Week TV right after this. Commitment. You need it to succeed on the farm. It's total dedication to the land, family, and community. It's more than a way to make a living. It's a way of life. You've had it since the first time you ran your hands through the soil, helped bale hay, or rode along in the combine. Your commitment. It's as strong as your family's trust. As honest as each long day you put in, and as pure as the opportunity that comes with every tomorrow. It's how we build our bins. With proven design, superior structural integrity, a lifetime warranty, and a promise to stand with you, no matter what storms come your way. The harvest will always be protected, so you can sell when it's right for you, your family, and your farm. Commitment. It's why we can say, there's nothing standard about superior. Advanced Grain Handling is the original dealer for grain handler dryers, bins, and accessories. With grain handlers, continuous mixed flow drying systems, you're capable of high levels of grain dryer efficiency, drying all types of grains, including seed grain. A family-owned company, Advanced Grain Handling, has licensed and trained service techs on hand whose number one focus is service. They also sell service monitoring systems, do millwright work, and have a licensed electrical shop. Contact Chad today at Advanced Grain Handling Systems, 701-788-8927. Where do you go for the latest news in agriculture? AgWeek Magazine. Reaching over 30,000 farmers and ranchers in North Dakota, Minnesota, South Dakota, and Montana. AgWeek provides the most up-to-date information on the markets, the trends, and the people who make it all happen. We're your source for news, not fluff. Dependable. Trusted. AgWeek. Subscribe today by calling 1-800-811-2580. Every day across America, excess food is gathered by a network of good people at local food banks, giving hope to millions of children who struggle with hunger. They've earned their wings, and you can too. Together, we can solve child hunger. Support Feeding America and your local food bank at feedingamerica.org. This week, we have three photos sent in by John Munson of Hatton, North Dakota. These first two show the damage to his corn crop by hail this season. And the last one is a gorgeous sunrise over his farm as he was headed out to combine. That's what keeps us going through the tough times. If you want to see your photo on AgWeek TV, email it with a description to photos at agweek.com. Thanks for watching this week's edition of Ag Week TV. Remember, for all your ag news, go to agweek.com. We'll see you next week.